Um, due to my very, 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 dot, 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 very, very bad play lately, I'm not going to play tonight. I'm going to show old games that I played. And probably most of my streams from now on will feature me not playing since I play so bad. So I'll show, you know, puzzles or my old games or old Grandmaster games or something that happened recently, like Wesley's went over Fabi today. Although Wesley did cheat because you, you have to play the game by yourself. And he said without Jesus, he wouldn't have won. So he thanked Jesus for helping him. But that's, that's against the rules. So I don't know about that. I'll talk to somebody about that. Come on in if somebody knocked. I think that was me. I'm smart. Oh, Perrier. Don't be alarmed. I've ordered food, so I'm going to eat on the stream. Hope you're not worried about that. Um, yeah. Uh, that's right. Well, I don't know about God. It's, it's just Jesus. Also, I did beat Fabi the one time I played him a rated game. So I must have been religious back then. It's, I didn't realize that Jesus preferred Wesley over Fabi. Did somebody raid me? I did get raided. Vernon Young raided me with a party of four. See, I did get raided. Thanks for the raid. Go, Vernon. Mm. Okay, let's um let's get to the stream, the chess part. I'll I'll be eating the whole stream, but this, there's gonna be some chess too. So, um, since I'm playing badly lately, I want to look at some of my old games where I didn't play badly, and you've seen some of them. And um, yeah, okay. So this is the last round of the World Open. Um, a long time ago. Uh. Probably, what years is this? Yeah, like over 20 years ago, maybe 30 years ago. Not 30 years ago. But a long time ago. Yeah. Okay, so I was white in my King's Indian where I exchange everything. I've had this position a million times. I've also castled here. Um, you know, in slow chess, but I play this end game. Um, my opponent played rook e8, which is common. Castled. Probably knight d5 is more common than castles. And I've played knight d5 maybe like once. But I figure people know that better. c6, I think, is a small mistake. Probably knight a6 is the best. And this line's very interesting. Definitely play knight a6 now, but he took this, which is a mistake. This ending's almost lost for black. It might even be lost. But knight takes e4 is a mistake, which I face a lot. I think knight a6, knight c5 is how black should play. Yeah, and in a blitz game, about 30 years, more than 30 years ago, I blundered with knight f6 check here, which loses a piece, because I'm stupid. And then I have two pieces attacked. Even the one that's high, not highlighted, yeah. And then black's winning. Um, so you play knight d6, you don't play knight f6. Okay. Now there's interesting tactic here, which I faced. My opponent played the normal bishop d6. There's also bishop takes b2 check. The idea is he's unleashing the latent potential you know, if his rook on my bishop, if I take this, he takes with check. But king d2 is an unexpected move, and the rook on, on e8 is trapped. <clears throat> so this is um, good for white. Um, and the bishop's attacked. And if you play rook f8, I play bishop to e7. And so forth. Uh, okay. So he took, he can't take my bishop on e2 because I'll check, I'll take this, and then this is pinned, and that's that's not good. <laughs> He's going to lose his knight, or I can just leave it pinned forever. So he played bishop f5, which is legal. The problem is, I have the two bishops, I have all the dark squares, and he has no compensation. This game is just bad here. 
Man, the engine wants me to play G4. What am I, Matt Larson? Mm. I'm the best? Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, I'm not. Karen's the best. However, tomorrow, as you all know, is Spencer's birthday. He turns 30. Um, and for reasons I don't understand, his he doesn't get a lot of people watching his channel, even his, his Twitch channel, even though it's very instructive. He analyzes your games. He analyzes his games. He analyzes openings. I mean, he does a lot of work, but his streams are all four hours. So... You should watch his stream because it's good. He'll answer questions in the chat. He doesn't hate you guys like I do. I barely hate you guys. Mm. Yeah, somebody, yeah. I mean, his channel is great. It's very instructive. If you want to get better at chess, etc. <laughs> I get complaints that my streams aren't European friendly because I stream too late. He gets complaints that he streams too early. So as long as everybody's complaining, we know we're on the internet and so forth. Okay, I played Bishop E3, always retreat. Walk my king up in the end game and I did. Yeah, B6 is a very bad square for his knight. Because I play B3. And that's his knight's terrible. Yeah. So this is really good for white. My king's better. Two bishops. More space on the queen's side. No counterplay for black. Great. Never play F6. I'm gaining more space. Gray for Ben. I have the most space. Trade those rooks. Never play f3. Gain space over there. And you can see his knight's just terrible. He has no space. His knight's no good. I can win on both sides of the board. Etc. And <clears throat> there are some positions in chess where the better your understanding of chess, normally the higher rated you are, not necessarily, You'll understand um, how much better somebody is. So if you're a low-rated player, you might say, well, equal material, three pawns each on both sides of the board. Maybe white's a little better. He has more space. And if you're like Magnus Carlsen, you're thinking, why isn't my opponent resigning? This is ridiculous. And Magnus is closer to the truth here. I mean, black can't do anything. All right, so he played the engine move, which does nothing. Damn, he saw his bishop was attacked. Terrible. I'm not in a hurry because he can't do anything. Just trap at his bishop. Put it in H. Yeah, B5 is a good move. It's I'm going to break through on the queen side because his king's on the king side. Also, my king's on the queen side. So he takes the pawn. I don't take on b5 like you expected. I play bishop e4 because I want the b7 pawn. And the truth hurts. Two b shrubs, what else? Yeah, the truth hurts. Yeah, still doesn't have a lot of counterplay. Mm -hmm. I played bishop g3 because I want to play bishop f2. And that way when I play bishop f2, he has to play knight a8, which is not good. But you got to do it.
Okay. Now, I wasn't a grandmaster when this game was played, but my technique was pretty good. So what move did I play here to end the game? Now, every move wins. There's no doubt about it. But this move is like, you know, ha-ha. But yeah, every move wins, so it's not really a good question. <clears throat> yeah, bishop e3 is what I did. Not an engine move, but this bishop is knight strapped. So I can win by taking this pawn and then winning his knight. Or I could take this pawn and not win his knight and make a queen. Or I could be mean and do that. But okay. Or I could still play the f4 way and win. Doesn't matter. This is just like, haha, you're losing. So those are the kind of games where I used to play well, where I had some kind of strategical advantage and then I got rid of counterplay and I eventually won. Those were my kind of games. Not a lot of calculating or tactics back in the day. Yeah. Go Ken West. Ken West can't be your hero. He's my hero. <clears throat> I hope Karen wins. Ooh, sushi. Go vegan sushi. It's everybody's favorite, except people who like sushi. Now, <clears throat> one thing I don't usually do, unless I'm streaming, is do a game report. See if I played as well as I thought I did. Very suspicious. So let's do one. These are all slow games. These aren't Blitz, Bullet, or Rapid. This game was played like 20, 25 years ago. I played 97, and he played 82.5. I made zero mistakes and zero blunders, and one mistake and, or zero blunders and zero missed wins. One mistake, one inaccuracy. 32 best moves to 25. All right, 82.5 is not great in a slow game for somebody who's, I think he's like 2300. So, yeah. Delicious. I gotta get a fork again because these noodles give me a hard time. I don't know how to use my noodle. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Do I ever drink San Pellegrino? All the time. <laughs> Quay win more like Quay lose. Bam! Um, go Grandmaster Gus. He's here a lot. He's probably here now. Well, usually he talks in the chat when he's here. All right, next game. You're so next. Okay, this is my game against Dick Despermian. I mean, Nick Defermian. I have really good results against Nick. I beat him this game, which was played in 1994, I believe. And then I beat him in 1999 in the U.S. Championship. We drew in the National Open, and we drew in the 1994 U.S. Championship. So in slow-rated chess against Nick, I have two wins and two draws. He's even older than me. Can you believe that? Yeah. Uh... Yeah, tonic water is just awful. Nothing is worse than tonic water. Nothing. Man, if I was eating Marmite and drinking tonic water, that would be a good punishment. Whatever I did to deserve it, I wouldn't do it again. I've accidentally had tonic water when I thought it was something else. Horrible. <clears throat> And? I don't know. Aw. You know Archer won against Andrew Jang. I heard and, that. And then some. I heard that. I showed, it, I showed it on the stream. Although I had the move order wrong. 
Okay. I gotta get this text on. Yeah, it's Karen. I mean, I don't have time right now, look at Hmm? Uh, I'm just looking at games that I played before you were born. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, soup. I guess I need a fork, too. Man, it's all spoons. Wow, it really is all spoons. Damn it. No, there's a couple knives. The life of the wife is ended by the knife. I think he's got it. How is that so many spoons and not a fork? Where, where's Alanis Morissette when you need her? The important thing is nothing in that song is ironic. She just doesn't know what irony means. But she knows how to make money. Did you get Alanis Morissette's latest album, Naked and Crying? Good album. Uh. Mm -hmm. All right, good, good chat. It's not too good. Ooh, it's soup. What was the point of this green tea soup? I think so. delicious more 83 subscribed more more <clears throat> there's a family guy where y2k happens and peter predicts it and the family's you know, mad but then it happens and whole world's destroyed except for like peter and his family and they start a new society and they throw out all of their guns because who needs guns that's stupid then Stewie replicates and he's trying to kill everybody. So they need guns, but they're all gone. And one guy looks at the other guy and says, remember yesterday we were discussing what irony meant? He says, well, now, and then they, the Stewie's killed them. But... Go Stewie's. Zebra 17A. Ugh. Mm hmm Yay, it's more, and then lots of stupid chat. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Someone get a board with a bigger nail. Hey, where'd all my viewers go? I was just about to eat. Mmm, delicious. Okay, this is one of my best games. It was a Nimzo Indian. I was white. That's the Nimzo Indian. I always play Queen C2, unless I don't. And Nick played a bad line. In this position, black should play C5. And D5 is okay. Knight C6 is okay. D6 is okay. He played B6. That's probably not okay. And I get the big center. The Kahuna Burger. That's that Hawaiian burger joint. Yeah, so now I have big center. And I, sh I analyzed this before the game because I thought Nick might play it. And I was analyzing with Peter Gabriel, and he said he, he liked white here. And I'm like, why do you like white? And he said, big, 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 big. And then I said, so? the end. And that's like two jokes. And most of you got neither one of them. Terrible. Mm -hmm. mm, sushi. You guys want some sushi? Then you should order some. 5,000 centidues. Gator Pabriel. Thanks, Fen Beingold. I like when it does that. You're the best. Somebody told me, probably Karen, something Karen would tell me. <clears throat> the song, In Your Eyes. Wait, is it In Your Eyes? No. 
What's the Peter Gabriel song with Kate Bush? If only Karen was here. Um, don't give up. Thank you. Yeah. Now, somebody told me, possibly Karen, seems like a Karen thing, that he asked, Peter Gabriel asked um, Dolly Parton to sing with it, with him on that song, and she said no. So then he asked Kate Bush. After he asked Dolly Parton and she said no, he was he was just going to give up. But then he was like, oh, wait, don't give up. So he asked somebody else. <clears throat> Etc. It's not a good burger. It's a tasty burger. Or is it a good burger? Maybe it is a good burger. I'm not sure. He says tasty at some point. Yeah. He does say tasty. I know he says tasty in the speech. I wasn't sure if that was where he said it. I do love a tasty burger. Sprite, good. Mm. The hamburger is the cornerstone of it, any breakfast. So it's funny. Today I was on YouTube for no reason. And I saw Between Two Ferns. It was just a clip. And the people between the two ferns were Tobey Maguire and Samuel L. Jackson. But I didn't see the whole thing. They just had a clip of it. But that was, that was pretty funny. It wasn't as funny as it could have been. But those are interesting guests to have at the same time. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Mm. Tell your wife I'm funny looking, so I got half of it down. Mm. A lot of people think Louis C.K., Dave Chappelle, <clears throat> and Ricky Gervais aren't funny. So what do you want me to do? If you don't think they're funny, what am I supposed to do? Jim Jeffries, etc. Mainly etc. Mm. <laughs> yeah. George Carlin was pretty good. Richard Pryor. Uh, Henny Youngman. Don Rickles. Yeah. I'm missing some you know, good ones because yeah, there's too many. Yeah. See, the guy said Rick, Ricky Gervais is not funny. The most ridiculous statement ever. 200 cents to do is what's for dinner? Um, I have vegan sushi and some noodle soup. Mmm. Delicious. Bob Newhart's a different kind of funny. Bill Burr, yeah. Mmm. Yeah, he is hysterical. Thanks, Shroffy, for... I don't understand what you did, but thanks. Yeah. Okay, so... He took my knight. I can't take with the queen because my e-pawn's insufficiently defended then. So I took with the pawn. And he retreated. Always retreat. Because I was threatening e5, the knight moves, then I take on h7. So he could play h6 also. And then I put it in H. Because, you know, if you want to beat somebody good, you got to beat them. Then I threatened his pawn. This is an interesting position. He can either play F5 or H6. F5 is more combative, and Nick is combative. So he played F5. And he could take with the knight or the pawn. He probably didn't take with the knight because bishop g5 is annoying. But the engine takes with the knight. He took with the g-pawn, so his queen defends um, his h-pawn. But then his rook isn't as active, his knight's not active. 
So it's sort of a poor move. But yeah. I'm gonna put it in H. Yeah. So I've probably told this story before, unless I haven't. Uh, when this game was played in 94, I was working with Gregory Kadanov because I had the Sanford Fellowship. So they paid for coaching. And you know, I won the game, so I showed Gregory, of course. Oh, no, no. Delicious. And on the physical board, he kept saying, okay, you played rig G3 check here. And I was like, no. And every move that happened, I said, I have to play rook g3 as king is on g8. Play rook g3 whenever I feel like it. And I didn't feel like it. And <clears throat> he was really impressed with my next move. And he's not easily impressed. And then insert funny joke here. That's what she said. Um, it's nine. Nine, nine, nine. And he, he really liked this move. It fi Finally, Stockfish 10 th found it on depth 26. It's, it's king f1. Because... I don't want to castle a queen side. It's not as safe there on, on the queen side as it is on the king side. But I do want to play rookie one. So, yeah. And he played bishop a6. And he's going to get counterplay against my weak c pawn. You know, he's got knight a5 and c4 is hanging now anyway. Etc. So now <clears throat> I I I play d5, which seems reasonable, and he play he can't take because his pawn's pinned, so he played knight a5. Yeah, and now I don't know if I calculated forever here or before I play d5. I don't remember, but I calculated this really long sequence where I sacrifice a pawn, but I thought I was winning, and so I took and played. Knight d4 attacking his pawn. So he has to play e5. And then I play c5. I want him to play e5 so f5 is weaker. Now his bishop's attacked on a6. So he traded. Then he took on c5. And I played knife f5. And he has to trade. And I saw this position in my head. And I was like, wow, this position is great for white. And right now the engine says it's equal, but I think the engine's wrong. I didn't have too much trouble winning. Okay, now the engine says I'm plus one. I had to wait for the engine to, you know, realize its error. You know, take a bite of food or something. Okay, he played knight c6, not recommended by the engine, but obviously the knight's terrible on a5. Probably wants his knight on d6. So probably, you know, maneuvering his knight here is a better idea. Yeah, he wanted it on e6, which is not, not as good. Yeah, now. Okay, not yet. I played rook a4. Because I wanted to play rook a6. And then his knight is like trapped. He can't go to c6, can't go to e6, etc. He put it in h. And I played rook d3. And this is where, this is the move I'm going to be proud of. I'll let you guys, yeah. He played c6, which um, I'm not a fan of that move. The thing is, he wants to play knight e6. But he's afraid of rook a6. So if he plays c6 first and then plays knight e6, I can't attack his knight. If he plays queen e6 here, I play rook takes knight check because his knight's defending his queen. So he played c6. And this is the move that I was most proud of in the game. Don't use an engine to cheat. Try to use your brain. Trying is the first step to failure. And... Um, th this, is the, this is the best move. It's the best move in the position. And I was I was really proud of myself because somebody has to be proud of themselves. I just don't know who. Yeah, it's by far the best move. 
And it is the move I'm most proud of in the game. So I'll, I'll have some food while, you know, you guys, high chess uh, TV people. It's not a GM move. I wasn't a GM then. It was an IM move. Okay, so I was thinking my opponent's next move is knight e6. And I said, if he plays knight e6, I want to play rook a6. So let's play a random legal move so I can show you what I was thinking. If he goes here, I want to go here. And then I analyzed here, here, here. Here, check, and then he has queen g6, and then I lose. So what move did I play in this position based on that variation? H5 doesn't work, but I understand why you suggested it. Because instead of queen g6, he could play queen d1 check and then queen g4. And his f-pawn's hanging, but I'm not winning. Yeah. King g1 is correct. Now, if that happened, I would win. Because queen takes d3 is not check. So I would just checkmate him. So to reiterate... If we went into the variation that I was hoping for, then it's not check, so I made him six ways from Sunday. Okay, so he played knight e6 anyway, because you gotta do something. And this was very funny. Thanks for the 200 cents to dues. Right. I remember, and this game was played in 1994, but I remember he picked up his queen, put it on e8. And then he looked, and he was not happy. And he put it back on e7, and he's like, oh, well, i got to play queen e8. Once you touch your queen, you have to play queen e8, because your knight on e6 is hanging. So that's, got to play queen e8. There's no other place for the queen. But he's losing anyway. The best move is knight d8. He just played knight e6, and knight d8's, you know. Obviously, his position's horrible. He can't move anything. His pawn structure's bad. His king's open. Okay. If you're just joining us to the stream, I, I didn't castle this game, even though my king's on g1. Ha ha, I tricked you. Oh, I'm sorry, he played c4, and then he played queen e8. All right. Queen e8 defends his c-pawn, but what does it undefend? Ooh, sushi. I said I'd eat you last. I lied. Yes, several people pointed out it's Rook D6 time. He undefended d6, so. Right. Yeah, this this position occurred for the first time in the game God versus Damn. He defended his f pawn. When I put it in h, I want to play h6 check. So his f one's not sufficiently defended. He got counterplay, except for one thing. There's good and there's not good. This is not good. 
Now, the main reason he doesn't have counterplay, which about 25% of you don't know, is my queen is defending b1. If my queen wasn't defending b1, then you'd have counterplay. But, no. Wow, the engine announces mate in 31, and I'm not kidding. Man, depth 40. <laughs> it's a hell of a drug. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. It's mate in 8 if he plays the second best move. The best move, it's mate in 30. He played this move. And this is a position that I used to I used to show my students. I didn't show them the game, I just showed them this position. And I said, what's better, queen takes or king h2? So we'll let you guys decide. Chess UWU subscribed. Good, good. We takes B2. A new move was suggested. An illegal move, but still. <clears throat> 1,800 quote-unquote viewers. Somebody else suggested Queen takes B2. That's a clear third. Queen takes B2. So white's winning after one move and white's barely winning after the other move. Hello. Hi. Did Spencer finish with Ryan? Oh, yeah, he won. He did? I thought Ryan's position was okay. I thought Ryan's position was terrible. Then I thought it was fine. Uh, you want some sushi or some soup? Uh, no. Ugh. What? You like that thing surrounding the sushi. Yeah, I'm not right. There's, um, you actually like that. There's hummus from this afternoon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But there's, I'm sorry, there's no pita bread. <laughs> what? There's no pita bread. Okay. Okay, wait, but, no, nah, that, that was it. Okay. Queen takes B1, 59%. Queen takes B1 is made in six, and King H2, white has a winning double rook ending, that would take about 50 more moves because of queen takes h6 chuck. And then white's, white's winning here, but it's like plus two. It's equal material. <laughs> um, I think this is the only move that wins. <laughs> and it's like plus two because, you know, the f1's hanging. All right. So that's a much worse move. However, I play queen takes b1 much better. And then he resigned here because if queen takes rook, queen b8 is made. So he tried and he failed miserably. The lesson is never try. Yabba Dabba did see it. Jay Wolfen with the huge donation. Nine cents to do's. That's nine cents better than 99% of you. Yay, 2,000 viewers. Okay, that was one of my best games. I really liked that game. And Kaidenov really was impressed. He said to me, because I was 2,500 feet day at the time, 25-something, said a 2,500 player isn't good enough to play that game. He was trying to compliment me. Yeah, when I beat, I beat into Fermian twice, and both times I just ran over him, which is an unusual way to beat him. All right, let's do an analysis and see how badly I played. And running and running. <laughs> yeah, he was complimenting me, but English isn't his first language. So I played 97.7, and he played 76.3. Zero missed wins, zero blunders, zero mistakes. I played 22 best moves to 16. Hooray! 
All right, 76.3 is pretty bad for Defermian. Maybe he should change his name to the aforementioned Dictospermian, but I doubt it. Four-time U.S. champion, Nick Defermian. Frankly, delicious.